Force Your Health uh, YouTube video. Um, I would like to start off, for anyone who doesn't know, my name is Dr. Cal Forster, and this is Linda Fratopnik. Um, and Linda, I want you to tell the people um, your age, and uh, you know we're gonna take it right, right from the beginning afterwards, so just share a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm Linda Freidhofnik. Actually, I'm Helene Freidhofnik. Ah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm 88 and a half years old. 88 and a half. Yes. And I, I just want to tell people that if they keep diets or mindset the, a positive way, mm. uh, they can uh, reach age any time. Mm. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So uh, part of the reason why I wanted to interview you today is you're 80 and a half years old. Um, Please correct me if I'm wrong, but you have no assistance in walking with a cane or a wheelchair. Um, you are mentally sharp, cognitively aware, have a great memory. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you're on any medications. Um, and you are fully healthy and vibrant and together, uh, which is really special because most people at your age aren't at that point. And one thing I always bring up is everyone's so focused on lifespan. How old does someone live, right? So you said you're 80 and a half. But what my bo biggest focus is, is how many healthy days can a person have on this earth? Healthy as in they wake up and they feel good and they can do everything they want to do. And they don't feel like they're trapped by something as, that's prohibiting them through health. So that's called health span. And you have a wonderful health span right now. Uh, so one thing with you is I want to take it back from the beginning and I want you to explain where you were born, where in the world you were born, um, a little bit about your childhood and what it was like in the beginning. Uh, because as far as I do know, I know you are German and I don't nope, know if Austrian. Austrian. Okay. So you're Austrian. <laughs> um, and I want you to let me know a little bit of what it was like back then. Actually, uh, but when I was a child, I was a very happy little child. I was active and moving, and actually, it was very hard to keep me down. Mm. And, uh, but when I was uh, uh, 12, mm -hmm. my parents had a car accident and died, but we went with my grandfather. Both, both your parents yeah. died in a car accident yeah. when you were 12? Yeah. Wow. I didn't and, know that. Um, but my grandfather, not so much my grandmother, because she was a business lady, but my grandfather um, was, uh, was very uh, firm about thinking what you're doing. And he um, did not, uh, because I had, and that's another story, I had a little bit something. I would know things that other people did not know. Like what? Like if you would say something and I actually would pick up that that, that, that isn't true. Mm. So you had a gift for Yeah, I don't truth. call a gift. I never <laughs> called a gift in all my life. I actually asked the... Uh, my, my grandfather actually needed a little help f for me mm. by Father Dominic because uh, I did not want that gift. Mm. And so I asked him to take it, go to God because he didn't listen to me. <laughs> go to God and just take it away from me, you know. He says, listen, you sit down and you, we're going to help you. Mm -hmm to keep your mouth in, uh, in uh, 
it's uh, in, uh, I think in now Germany, uh, mm. in... Uh, were you living in Austria during yeah, this time? Yeah, So you were, you were in Austria. Yeah, and so... Uh, to what age? They thought, yeah. You know, actually, I go from stage to stage. That's a, a different story. <laughs> you know, I can go from, a, you know. Uh, yeah, generally speaking, how long were you living in Austria? And then from I there. I was 24, 20, uh, 24, uh, four, and then I went with my husband to America. Okay, so around 24, you and your husband went to America. Yeah. So from what I recall, um, you know, you lived with your parents until you were 12. It was a horrific accident. Yeah. Um, from there, your grandparents took you in. Yeah. And your grandmother was a very um, alpha business-like yeah. woman. Yeah. And so yeah. it was really your grandfather who yeah. was kind of the quote-unquote parent in your life. Um, you realized that at such a young age, you had a gift. Well, not a gift. I no, apologize. please don't. Um, you had something about you where you were able to make part of my English cut through the BS and get straight to the truth. And it's something where you didn't want that necessarily. And you went to St. Dominic um, yeah. to see if you can get that removed from your instinctual behavior. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to say personally, uh, you still have it to this day. That, oh my goodness. Uh, do you uh, know? Innate. Why, why didn't you want that? It scared Do you, know you to know what the child has to go through? Because mm. actually, I didn't even know that I did that. Even when my mother-in-law came once, she says, listen, Lindy, I didn't ask you yet. You're already answering me. Mm. So it is, uh, it, it's a challenge. And as a child, they kind of thought that I was not quite, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, from there, um, you came to America and you have something where it was a little bit of your identity. And from your identity with this thing that's instinctual, what career path did you go? Did you just become a mother? Uh, did you just stay as a housewife? Did you have a career? Um, and how did that be implemented with your um, instinctual truth behavior? Actually, um, I, 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 you know, I want to say because when we came here, mm -hmm. Harald got, wanted a bigger job. But, you know, that's why I remember I told you, know who you are. Mm. Because my husband was very good in what he did, but he wasn't always sure who he was. Mm. And so he worked himself to the bottom. And he could have done that a little different. So I actually was always helping Harald because I would sense when things did not work well in the shop. I would know. When you say the shop, did you guys uh, in the company? So tell tell us a little bit about this company. Was it a, a family uh, company? He actually, is, I don't have their permission to say that kind Not of stuff. Not a worry, because that would be you know. It, 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 they always knew when they had problems, they could come to me. Mm. You know, but um, uh, so when when the jobs didn't came out right, I would pray. Because mm. I am a praying person. Mm. I pray everything and uh, I, I just need God. And because I'm a Christian, I need Jesus and I need Holy Spirit, I need them all. Mm. So let me ask you a question on that. So you're very religious, um, but one thing I realized is religion and spirituality are separate. I'm not religious. Uh -huh. I want a relationship. Mm -hmm. I want a relationship with Heavenly Father. I want a relationship with Holy Spirit. And I want a relationship with uh, Jesus. Would you say that the relationships you have uh, with these higher level individuals um, is part of the reason why you're so healthy today? I wouldn't know. 
you know, I really don't know. I, but I know one thing because I have seen so many people that are so negative mm. and they are so driven. They don't even catch themselves. Mm. And um, they literally, uh, they just live for whatever they can achieve, whatever they can, uh, uh, most of them are actually want um, recognition from anybody. Mm. I don't need recognition. I love them all. If they don't love me, I still love them. Mm. And I, I care for them, whatever I can, but I surely don't, uh, I don't need any um, praises. I don't need any. So, uh, yeah, one thing that's really, um, you know, special about you and why we wanted to interview you is that uh, we all hear about the Mother Teresas of the world, the Deepak Chopras, the Gandhis, um, the Martin Luther Kings of the world, uh, Nelson Mandela, and you weren't known on that level. However, Thank for, the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, because I'm sure they had a lot of suffering attached to that kind of representation. But you were able, you are able to tap in on a human spiritual essence that people go through a lifetime never even experiencing one moment of what you live were able to live your life uh you have no ego attached to you uh you live it day by day with appreciation uh you are not going for external goals and realize that all the most special things are within inside of you um and you it seemed like you didn't have to learn that like most people have to go through something really serious and sad for them to get to that and maybe it had to do with your parents and maybe that's why you got to that point but it seemed like at such a young age you were already miles ahead of everyone in that type of philosophical space um so do you think it was just something you i know you were born with this truth uh but do you think you were born with that kind of egoless part of you that is surrounded by truth and subconscious, or is it something that you mentally worked on every day of your life? Uh, you know, it, I just did my living. Mm. And I, I know that uh, when trouble showed up, uh, I would go and they would call in, the, would you help me with And then I would help them, put hands on them, mm -hmm. you know, because I could feel. That was another story. I would feel things. I doctor. Can, can uh, you tap into that about the, the feeling? Yeah, Doctor uh, Greg Rubinstein. Mm -hmm. He was taking care of uh, my boss's children. Uh, my mm -hmm. husband. I, I was actually uh, speaking to him today, so it's funny you mentioned him. And you know what he said to me? So he said uh, because. It, it, uh, Reasons were very um, difficult people. They wanted everything they wanted because they had the money mm. and they did not listen very well, you know. And so um, Dr. Greg, because uh, uh, one girl had problems with her thyroid here, and she was so overstimulated, so I put the hand, my fingers there, mm. and they balanced. And it balanced. Yeah. And so... Uh, so it's kind of the idea where Then people... he said to mm -hmm. me, uh, so he says, I can't do that. Mm. So I said, sure you can do it. Just put the hands there and you will feel wherever is wrong, mm. you know? And so that time, Dr. Arnold Foster had a little tablet mm. that he worked and he found more out of whatever is mm. wrong with the people. Yep. So I got him got Dr. Uh, Greg uh, Rubinstein mm -hmm. a tablet from Germany. He actually went with her on a business trip 
to get that tablet for him. Wow, I didn't know that. And then he he then he says, Linda, would you come with the with the whole family again to Manhattan? I said, no, that's why I got you the tablet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I needed to get. Mm. that family off my back. Sure, <laughs> that's you know? very funny. Uh, so one thing that, uh, you know, you kind of said without saying is uh, there's a concept called the healing power of touch. And uh, one thing that's really special about having, um, you know, as a chiropractor and myself is that it's one of the few doctors in the world where you have your hands on the patients. A lot of doctors are sitting, kind of like we are, and the patient talks to them, whether they're a psychologist, a psych uh, psychiatrist, uh, an MD, and thus forth, an ND, uh, where they just listen, they try to figure out what's going on, maybe they do a few labs, and then they provide some kind of medicine or supplementation or what forth. And uh, chiropractic is very unique with the point where they actually get to feel the patients. and. There's something special in the healing power of touch where the patients seem to get better really quickly with what you're saying. And it's not always around just the muscles, but it can even be around the thyroid and the neck. Um, so you mentioned Dr. Arnold Forster, and I think that's a great segue uh, because you're one of the special patients in Forster Healthcare where you got treated oh. by my grandfather, Dr. Arnold Forster, my father, Dr. James Forster, and myself, yeah. Dr. Cal Forster. Uh, so I have two questions for you. Um, one is around the concept of, I want you to tell the people what Forster Healthcare means to you and your experience, but also the other part of it you're gonna do. Just go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just go. Yes. And the other part, is I want you to start going individually through my grandfather, my father, and me, and what the experience has been on an individual level and what each person has meant to you differently. Uh, you take your time. I knew right away when we went, uh, I'm gonna tell you how we got to uh, Dr. Arnold Foster, okay? Mm -hmm. We just bought the house in 81st uh, Road in Glendale and my stove broke. And so we, the repairman came and my neck was so bad, mm. so bad. So he says, you know, lady, I have the best chiropractor that you could ever find. Mm. And he said, but he's in Brooklyn. I would take anyone. I would, I actually took a, a taxi to get to Brooklyn. Mm. It was so bad. Then I got down there. What year was this about? Oh, it must be. You know, he still had the house and there were young, uh, young chiropractors and your father was just got out of uh, chiropractic school, mm. you know? So we're talking about maybe the late 80s. Early. Early 80s. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so, okay. Dr. Forster uh, wasn't in. Mm. He had, uh, he was on leave. Mm. That time he was on leave when mm. there was something not right with him. He yes. needed, yeah. Yes, he, uh, he broke his, yeah. Yeah, and so a young chiropractor in the basement, <laughs> uh, there wasn't too far. Oh, oh, no, oh like there that, you know. He fixed that neck just like that. Mm. And he says, you know, you would have to come if you want to keep on being treated by me, you would have to come to Manhattan because I'm leaving here. You go to Manhattan and probably get his own uh, business. Mm -hmm. Then uh, a few times I went to talk to me, Harald too. I right away put Harald in because I right away knew within me Mm. that these people are special because they right away went to the point where I really had the problem. Mm. And so uh, I, I will be grateful to Dr. Arnold Forster forever. I know he had, uh, you know, he will be very blunt. 
you know. <laughs> and um, but he was good. He was mm. a genius. Mm. He would. Uh, I send people to him that doctors did not work with anymore, and he fixed them. Mm. And then doctor, uh, then all, uh, we, we went a few times, and then um, Dr. Jamie Forster said, you know, Linda, I am in Howard Beach. That's five minutes away from you. So that suited me well, but Harald was, uh, because Harald needed the firmness of Dr. Arnold Forster, uh -huh. because he was another one ruling, you know? Like Harald was a ruler where he worked. Sure. And so was Dr. Arnold Forster. So I went to Dr. Uh, Jamie Forster, mm. and he, he kept Dr. Arnold Forster. So your husband went to my grandfather while you went to my father. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because then I had to leave. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Forster, Arnold Forster, I went with Harald then just to bring him there. Or Then he said, Linda, you don't look right. I'm gonna, my father said this to no, you? No, grandfather. Oh, my grandfather. Because okay. I didn't go back to, mm -hmm. because... Yes, understandable. There was a little bit of friction among them. And they, families have, you have to protect families, no matter what it is. Mm. And so, uh, we went for years there. And then we found out that Dr. Uh, Arnold Forster, he told us that he has not, uh, that he's not making it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, so they know is, your father. So at this saying. point, uh, this is now later in his career. Yeah. Where, uh, you know, he's kind of on the way out. Yeah. Um, so at that point now, you're fully transitioning to my father at this yeah. point. And that worked wonderfully mm -hmm. until my husband passed away. Mm. How old were you when your husband passed away? Uh, eight, you say eight, 81. Okay, in 81, okay. Uh, so it's early. No, no, I was 81 already. Oh, you were 81 already? Yeah. Okay. And, but I couldn't get into, because I am. Did you have any other doctors? outside of Forster Healthcare that were working with you, or did you only go from um, people within, the doctors within Forster Healthcare? Yes, yes. So you started back in the 80s with them, and to this day, uh, with even me treating you, um, and you basically were able to get to 88 and a half years old in perfect health with just Forster Healthcare. Yes. But definitely, or they wouldn't want anything else ahead. Things now where we're going to ask, there are many people who are going to be watching this video who never got, had an office visit with my grandfather, my father, or myself. Um, and they're probably looking and listening to you right now and wondering, what are they doing that's so special that made you so healthy? Um, but it's different coming from myself or coming from a doctor's language, but it's something different when it's coming from a patient. Uh, so there's an opportunity to explain what about the service that we provide ha that you think has led to your longevity and in your health. Definitely, the, uh, for the chiropractic, uh, it is none like anything else that I ever experienced. None. In, in what real, way? In, because you when you go there and they know how to fix it. They literally know how to fix it. And you're, uh, you're, you know, you're at peace mm. because they give you the best, they actually give you more than uh, the best. Mm. It is uh, just to think 
that I don't find a way kind of makes me a little uh, makes me uneasy. Mm -hmm. But I know I will find a way because he's still in he's still in on the job. Yes, I believe it. And I I really believe that, and uh, I would recommend I I would highly recommend for the chiropractic. So, so mm -hmm. just I am. I don't know about other people, you know, other chiropractics, but I don't always hear the best of it, you mm -hmm. know. And so um, I only can recommend uh, for the chiropractic. Mm. That very, that's very humbling to hear and that's very special, um, you know, that you almost see it as part of your representation of someone of a practice that was a resource um, in your health and uh, I can tell it's very genuine and very authentic and knowing what you have in store with the truth I think everyone in this video knows you're being 100% truthful um, as far as the differentiation between my grand or my father and me do you think it's very copy and paste and we all practice the same or yeah. have you noticed there's an evolution in the practice or that it is cyclical so maybe I'm a little bit more like my grandfather than my father in what respect have you noticed a change in the different generations? Uh, Dr. Uh, Jerry Forster, mm -hmm. uh, literally, uh, you know, that just, I mean, the, Dr. Arnold Forster uh, it was the same, but Dr. Jamie Forster worked from his heart. Mm. He worked, he was, uh, he was, very competitive that you know uh with his father mm. he uh because his father wanted nothing but the best from each one from each one who was there actually uh it's very it's very amazing how uh, uh how he asked for so much from uh, because Dr. Anna Foster would w once in a while tell me certain things, and but he was, but he was, he he loved Dr. Jamie Foster. Mm. He loved him since deeply, but he did not. They they have different characters. Mm -hmm. They had different characters, but Dr. Jamie Foster. Help my husband like uh, nobody else. Mm. He, my husband, would just want doctor when doctor uh, for, uh, Arnold Foster passed away. He was very very close to doctor Jamie Foster, mm. and whatever doctor Jamie Foster would say, it he would do it mm. and he would uh dr jamie foster said i because he had to go then to doctors and that was the downfall mm. so the minute he started going yeah. to all these different yeah. doctors that was also the, the yeah. downfall of his he, health because he um. had to uh, because uh, of his heart mm. but dr jamie foster got him out one time I went to Manhattan with him with a taxi and he calmed him down and he was uh, just right back again. Mm. Because, and then he, he, you know, Dr. Jamie Forster was a lifeline to Harald. And Dr. Forster, Jamie Forster said, you, the, you, he doesn't need to come every three weeks. I said, yes, he does. Mm. Because I need that Harald is secure and peaceful. Mm. Because he needed, he needed Dr. Jamie Forster because he's, uh, Dr. Jamie Forster is a wonderful, wonderful, caring and tremendous amount of knowledge. Mm. Tremendous amount of knowledge. And he, I brought people there, but people didn't, you know, people don't want, 
they want everything through the Medicare or whatever it is, but you can't get this kind of... This uh, type of care. No. Yeah, it, it is special. Um, and I do notice that once patients get exposed to this type of treatment, um, it's hard to unsee what you see. Uh, so it is that type of special work. And um, if you don't know, then, you know, people try to rationalize that whatever is out there or commercialized is what is around healthcare. And there's something a lot deeper going on, um, which is part of the reason why the work is very special. Um, and everything we've been talking about is around the concept of health as a, as a, as a lifeline, but um, not to get too morbid, but you did get to, you did witness death oh. many times in your life. And it comes a point now you're going to live for another uh, 60 more years. Uh, but uh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but uh, when that time comes, are you nervous around the concept of death? No, never feared that a minute, even as a child. Mm, so tell me a little bit on your perspective or the way you view death, because most people in the world have a fear of death, have a fear of dying. Um, but you're saying that you have zero fear of death, of the unknown, of the other side, of leaving the earth prematurely. Um, can you speak to that? That much, uh, because my grandfather was very, uh, was very much involved with me. And, and because, you know, I never really blamed, when I was a child, I didn't blame God for it, but I blamed God for <laughs> when my husband died. Mm. When, when your husband died, half of it goes. Mm. You really are not, not full. Mm. It took me 18 months. And your father, bless his heart, we would talk about her and I would bowl and bowl because mm. I couldn't, they called me from Europe, I couldn't answer a phone call. Sure. So it was 18 months. And then, so I said to uh, God, I said, Heavenly Father, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I went through it and I, 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 I really can't understand you, but I need you. And the minute I said that, I, peace flew over me again. Mm. So I had my peace. So I, I actually would recommend everyone, because everyone knows that there is a God. Mm. And if you can keep close to that, uh, I think you can master anything. Mm. And you wanted to ask me what? Yeah, so the, what I was trying to ask you is, you don't have a fear around the concept of death for yourself, that if it happened yesterday for you, or if it happened 30 years from now for you, you're at peace either way. Yeah. And that's, you're one of the few who truly means that when, when that is being said. Um, how, it, can you explain the philosophy around how you view death and why you're so accepting and okay around it? As I got older, but maybe this maybe doesn't fit in too well, you know, because I, um, I went once to a meditation class, you know, because uh, Dr. Rambling lived up the block. We went every week before we found Dr. Uh, Arnold Forster. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, Linda, because I worked for the ambulance, it was an EMT. And um, he says, you work yourself up because we had to carry patients sometimes from third floors down. Mm. So he got me to a yoga class. And then they, uh, she was teaching a, a meditation. That was another story. I right away went through a tunnel, a lighter tunnel. 
and uh, to the other side. Mm. And uh, uh, when I came back, you know, everything looked green. This is not green, this is brown in, on the other side. Mm. And I had to stop meditating because you instantly, even if I would do it now, mm -hmm. it would turn and that I would be pulled into that. So you're... Uh, the other mm. side is fine. Mm. So you're saying through meditation, through your experience with the, um, the emergency, um, you were able to tap into the other side for moments and were able to, in a sense, see it for what it is. And uh, it's not as bad as what people may or may not think it is. And you were in you at, through any moment, if you wanted to meditate, you can get into a deepness kind of like in sleep, this light sleep, this deep sleep, this deep REM sleep. And uh, you can kind of get into that phase where you can tap in and see the other side. Actually, instantly it, it started, starts turning. And that's why I don't even start it because you have to come back here. Mm. And this one, this side is not that, the other side is better. The other side's better. Yeah. Um, are you able to share anything um, of what the other side looks like? anything that you can express into words? You know, I, I will really tell you, uh, my, my, my life was always a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else's. But, you know, that, that, that's Linda. You know, <laughs> that's Linda. And so, I, I'm, whatever it is, I, as long as I'm here, mm -hmm. I will do my best. And I will, uh, uh... So while you're here, there is one of the concepts of, of longevity is around the concept of having a purpose in this life. Obviously, you know what my purpose is. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, my mother's is around the concept of being a professional artist and also as a wife and a mother. Um, you were a professional wife and you still are. Um, besides family, um, what other purpose did you think you have on being on this earth that you feel you played a role in? Actually, I, I really believe that I was always helping people, even over here. And my husband said, in Queens, everybody would come to Linda, even little women, when they had boobs, they came and I had a plaster and I had a mm. little bit natural stuff. I think I was, I was brought into this world to be helpful. Mm. And, uh, you see, I would never be good in anything that is... Uh, uh, Logical? You're, uh, what word are you thinking of? I never really wanted to achieve Mm. Uh, all kinds of things. I was happy when ha my husband could get through what he was doing because mm. he loved his job. But uh, yeah, so it seems like uh, you know you truly enjoy you're truly enjoying the journey of life. Um, you realize there's no starting or stopping. There's no quote unquote um, goal at the end. At the at the end, it's always a continuous process. And um, it's one of those things where you're not, it goes back, you're not, a, you're not attached to any, any external um, incentives because uh, it seems like you have all the happiness and peace from inside. Um, so one thing... He just gets it. <laughs> so he just one, gets it. <laughs> so uh, one thing I would ask you is you wake up in the morning and I would love for you to take us through your day. What's, do you, do you wake up and have a prayer or a thought in the morning? Do you go and eat breakfast first? Uh, take me through a Linda day of Linda's life from the minute she, she the minute her eyes opened. 
the minute I wake up, I thank God for protecting me all during the night. And I will say, Heavenly Father, what are we doing today? Jesus Christ, what are we doing today? Holy Spirit, what are we doing today? Mm. If I go shopping, because I'm still driving, not highway. <laughs> you know, that's my problem. I would make me yeah. to your father. <laughs> then I would say, today we are going to shopping. I thank you. And then uh, I would, once in a while I would say, I'm not going to get involved with all the people. Sure enough, it comes. And right in here, mm. I can feel that I need to do it. Mm. Then I drive them to shopping, drive them to the uh, pharmacies or uh, wherever they need to go mm. because they're 92, 91. And I always help since I'm here. So my husband said, listen, that time he said, stop at once. Mm. We had that in Queens. And, but that's Linda. You, you can't take Linda out of her skin, <laughs> yeah. you know? So it's one of those things where uh, you touched on two points. One is, as far as a purpose, it's providing a service. And while you're on this earth, you're always going to provide a service. And a service could be as, you know, instrumental as being a doctor or as simple as filling up someone's gas at a gas station to let them move on with their day. It's still providing a service or picking up the litter. Uh, but what's unique about you is most people have a calendar of itineraries of this is what I'm going to do. And you're a little bit more of, instead of you shooting the shots of what you're going to do, you're taking in and accepting um, on a spiritual sense, what does the world need from me today? And wherever that takes me is where I'm supposed to be. Um, and it's one of those things also where you put your hand here and that's where the expression of having a gut feeling comes from. And it seems like you're very, have a lot of intuition around your gut feeling. Um, and uh, there's a lot to it, even to the point where um, I think it's Hippocrates or Socrates or any of them would say, uh, it all begins in the gut. And uh, funny enough, when patients come in my office, one of the first things we look for, and I know it might seem biased to have a master's in nutrition, um, but we start off usually with the gut. And that's where it kind of all begins. And it seems like that's what you meant when you were putting your hand there. So it's service and having a gut feeling. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, you see, I'm just Linda, you know. This, <laughs> just, you know, and you know what? It's, it's enough for me. Mm. Because uh, I would highly recommend people not to fear the other side. Mm. Really not. Mm. I think when they get there, they wonder why did I worry so much about this side. Mm. So uh, it's 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 interesting you brought that up. Um, a lot of people are stressed. A lot of people live their life around fear, around a lot of headaches and. Of all the things you're doing really well in your life, that is just be Linda being Linda. I know it doesn't take a lot from you, um, but for people to reach the level you're at takes a tremendous amount of effort. Um, if you can give any kind of advice to the millions of people who are going to watch this video, Please what what don't, what, what don't fear. Don't fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Have faith. In everything you do, you mm. can get all the help you need. Mm. You just have to say, listen, I need your help. Show me what to do. Mm. Show, and when things get very critical, uh, I have someone that has a hard time because they are drug addicts, you know, the family is traumatized. I said, you know what I would, uh, I went, I go, Heavenly Father, I don't know what to do with this. Mm. Here, I, I lay it in my hands and say, I give it to you and I'm not picking it up anymore. Mm. And I, I, I know you will take care of it. I thank you for it. 
I praise you for it, and I love you. Mm. And fear is, uh, I actually meet people, they are so afraid of everything. Mm. I'm afraid of nothing. Afraid of nothing. I don't like, like certain things. I don't like to go on the highway because it is a, a rat race to go on the highway. <laughs> uh, but that's not fear. It's just my inadequacy mm -hmm. to handle that one. Mm -hmm. Because, but I don't fear. Mm -hmm. Fear, it, it, when fear comes, as the Heavenly Father, I tried everything. I do not know what to do with this. Here you have it. I know you know what to do with it. Mm. I tried. I tried to handle it, but I don't know how to do it. Here it is. And I drop it and leave it there. And mm. it takes care of itself. Mm. So I want to bring it down to one of our last questions. And uh, it's definitely a very interesting question. But one thing about fear is... I heard a great line about fear and uh, it really resonated with me um, and it's fear is excitement without a breath. Whenever someone experiences fear, they have an urgency to do something, they second guess themselves without a breath and that's a hidden excitement. Um, so I always, I, I found that line very interesting because right out, right after fear is faith. Um, and the last thing I want to mention is uh, there's we live in a world where everyone thinks it's always getting worse, but things get kind of repetitive. Uh, but there is a lot of religion and culture and demographics where people are very uh, has a lot of hatred around it. Um, you're very Christian uh, with Jesus and um, the different saints and but you also happen to work with, um, you know, J Jewish doctors, as in my family practice. And you, no matter how religious you are, it didn't make you discriminatory in any respect, and you actually encouraged it. So for someone who's so religious, so passionate about Christianity, how are you also so open-minded to blending the world to make it all one where we have so much division in life. So how are you able to navigate that throughout gonna, your life? I'm going to tell you something. God is not just the heavenly father of Catholics or whatever they are. God is the heavenly father is our heavenly father. Mm. We are all his kids. We just don't want them. You know, we mm. just uh, everyone uh, you know I, I don't care who the people are. Mm -hmm. I, I can love anybody. Or I like some people a little bit better. <laughs> that I have to mention. Sure. It's, it's good to have opinions. So I, I, yeah. so I think, um, you know, tell me if I missed something. But what we gathered here today is don't have fear, have faith. Um, be truthful. Provide a service. And to be open-minded, that death is actually a beautiful thing on the other side. There's no rush of getting there, but it's not something we have to avoid wanting to get there one day. And um, there's value in healthcare to find the right doctor for you. Oh yes, and I recommend foster care. <laughs> I was, uh, I really, uh, otherwise, if I wouldn't believe that, I wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been there that long. Mm. Cause I, I, Do you think if you never met the fa our family practice of Forster Healthcare, do you think you would be here today? I, I don't think so because I have seen uh, when Harald had to use doctors, mm -hmm. how fast you can sleep mm -hmm. because medication, I had, a, I had to give it up. I had a PDR, it was that thick. I mean, that much it helps. Two pages, it really takes your life. Mm. I, if people can get away, because people always think a little pill or little that would help them, it doesn't. Mm. Just learn how to, uh, because within your body, 
is is a healer. Mm -hmm. The healer is within you if you allow him to work. Mm -hmm. You know? That, I think that's a wonderful way to ending it. The healer is within ourselves. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate it. It was a perfect Thank interview. You.